Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV, coming to you today live from the floor of ITW here in National Harbor. I'm Barb Mitchell, and joining me is Jeff Martin, Vice President of Business Development for Ascent. Mm -hmm. Thanks Thank for joining us. You. Thank you, Barb. Thanks yeah. for having me. We were having a great conversation just before, and then they pulled us on air, and so I want to continue that conversation. Mm -hmm. We were talking a little bit about, you know, the history of Ascent, you know, what Ascent is up to now, but I'd love for you, let's just start there. Let's start with if you wouldn't mind telling us just a little bit about Ascent, mm -hmm. especially for those of our viewers who may not be as familiar. Mm -hmm. Ascent is a vertically integrated operator of critical facilities. We operate 90 data centers, hundreds of edge locations, primarily in North America. And what that means for our customers is that we are focusing on the preventative, the corrective maintenance, the actual care and feeding of their critical facilities. Now it doesn't extend just to the critical facilities, it goes Beyond then, um, sometimes into the racks, we provide traditional smart hands, we provide remote site services, and when I say that we're vertically integrated, it really means that we try and focus on everything that it's going to take to run a facility. So we have construction and design and engineering all in-house. So in addition to some of the, the critical facilities that, that we run for our customers, we also try and make sure that we're there for them 24-7. We have a 24 by 7 operations center. It's based in St. Louis, so we're able to take calls in the middle of the night and help them out regardless yeah. of whatever problems are happening at their facilities. Yeah, they know mm -hmm. they can rely on you if anything, mm -hmm. if anything comes up. Um, but, you know, the Ascent has been in this industry a long time, 1998, mm -hmm. I believe, in the data center industry. Mm -hmm. But lots has changed, right? And, and, and that's had an impact, I think, even on how what you focus on as an mm -hmm. organization. So can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. The data center industry has gone through multiple changes over the past 20 something years. I think uh, innovations from the cloud where people decided they would needed to go off premise. Now there's been a trend in what people are calling cloud repatriation, where maybe the cloud hasn't been the answer for everything. And I think that the, the concept of a hybrid IT solution where they have cloud on premise and off premise and have their something in a co-location has really been driving people to bring some of their workloads back on site. But it's not the same as when it was when the, some of those workloads left. One of the big trends that we see is in what people are generally calling the edge. Now, we, we've been managing a lot of edge locations for a long time. We just didn't call it that. Yeah. And these are the hundreds of sites that we operate for our telco and fiber customers. These are traditionally POPs, head ends, ILA huts, fiber huts. Now, all of a sudden, they're all edge. Yeah. But I think what people are really referring to when they talk about the edge today is the definition of a modular data center, 3, 10, 5, 20 racks, anything that is going to bring the workloads closer to the actual customers and, that are consuming them. Yeah. Generally, what the way we define the edge is any critical facility that can't quite justify having an actual person there. So now you end up with the problem of a critical facility, still needs the same care and feeding, still needs the same vendor network, number mm -hmm. of vendors, partner management that needs to occur to, for that to run uh, efficiently, but you can't have an actual person there. So we provide, in, in one of the innovations is the concept of a fractional facility support. Mm. Yeah. Clever. Yeah, very clear. I mean, that's a very clear proposition and very clear positioning. So thank you for, mm -hmm. for sharing that uh, with us. I think it's helpful. And, I'm, you know, when we think about, you know, some of the conversations that you alluded to, but also the, the evolution of our industry, mm -hmm. it, it puts pressure on you as an organization to keep up with that, right? And, and to continue mm -hmm. to innovate. And, and so how are you doing that? Really, innovation comes from a couple places, um, obviously internal and external. So I'll talk more about the internal. Yeah. One of the one of the great advantages that we have uh, is our partner network. Over the years, in order to support all of these facilities, we've had to develop a vast network of 700 plus vendors that we work with and have vetted on a regular basis. So with these are sources of innovation, they're sources of communication, and we also work with our in-house team, going back to the vertical integration, the advantages of having designer, designers, engineers, people that focus on construction, traditional yeah. smart hands, and the facilities people all under one roof has really given us 
a lot of points of information to pull from. So when an innovation comes up, we're able to propagate it out across our customer base. Edge was a great example of that. Yeah. Everybody's facing the same ch challenge, but nobody really knows exactly what it is. So we're there looking to us for some definition and assistance in how to support something that they don't maybe quite fully understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's great as you come in as the as the experts and, and the trusted partner for a lot of these folks. And um, so when we start to think about beyond here, I mean, this week will will wrap up ITW in a mm -hmm. few hours. And I'm sure you've had lots of conversations this week that you probably want to continue. Two part question. First of all, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the conversations you've been having and, and that you hope to continue to have over the year ahead? Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the second part of that is how can people find you to, to sure. have those conversations? A lot of the conversations have been some of the conversations we've been having for a long time, which is we, a company has critical facilities, either a data center or some variety of edge location. And at some point, it doesn't necessarily make sense for them to be operating it on their own. There could be some operational challenges. <clears throat> they could just be looking <clears throat> to us for some expertise outside of their multi, it could even be a multidiscipline organization that they have as well. So there's always going to be a conversation to be had around bringing in a third party to bring in our expertise and even just have a conversation around what does it mean to have somebody else run your facilities. Yeah. And going forward, to answer your second question, mm -hmm. best places is either on LinkedIn or on our website, ascentcorp.com. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions. Great. Ascent ascentcorp.com. Mm -hmm. We're both, uh, it's the um, final day here at ITW. And uh, Jeff, thank you so much mm -hmm. for, for joining us. And thanks for sharing so much great information mm -hmm. about uh, Ascent. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV, mm -hmm. coming to you live today on day three of ITW at National Harbor. Until next time, see you soon.